What's up YouTube, Mr. Lamessi here, and today we're going to be continuing our Hell Assassin guided playthrough. Let's play. I've been doing this for years and I still don't know if I prefer guided playthrough or let's play. So we still call it both. Um, she was rolling, right? She's been rolling through normal and nightmare. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying that. Obviously, in the middle of this run, or this guided playthrough, they updated the assassin. So now fire traps are even better than they were before, like two and a half times better, which is kind of insane. Uh, so you're going to be even faster than I was prior. I almost feel like I need to redo this whole traps in guided playthrough. But you're still going to do the same exact build. It's just Light. everything will All die faster mice. now. So, you know, that's just the, the difference, really. Um, obviously as well, you'll still probably want to convert over to light eventually, at least when you get to hell, you could probably take fire traps now through chaos, um, and whatnot. But when you get into hell, uh, having light traps actually, I think ends up being a little bit better because lower resist is going to help with more monsters. You won't have sunder charms yet generally, unless somehow, you know, you start playing this. Den of Evil, Blood Mort. Well, no, because you'd have to kill Bale first to get the Hell Sunder Charm, anyways. So yeah, you're not, you're probably not gonna be doing that. But regardless, let's uh let's just dive in here. Get started on this character. Thank you, Puce and Jarathan. So we have the Spirit. We have an Assassin skill, uh, Circlet. Again, you could just make Lore here, and it'd be even better. We have Nokazin, Ancient's Pledge, Hisaris, um. Okay, ring. It's got 55 to mana and a little light resin MF, which is nice, but this one can definitely be replaced with a better ring. 100 to life belt we shopped. Again, you can shop really nice stuff there. 29 light res, 23 fire res, 9 MF ring. This is a godly ring for a playthrough. And then some 40 to life 20 IS gloves. Additionally, we could go shop some like 30 cold res gloves or something. Um, to help out there if we wanted our teleport staff, our lower resist wand, and then some charms with resistances and things. And here you can see we are actually maxed on fire res, which is crazy nice. Uh, and that's definitely one. Fire and light res are the ones you want to be focusing on more because you can always... Oops, I just realized that's my uh, hack mod. Let me turn that off really fast. I was like, wait a second, I don't remember Akara selling this many nice things. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. We didn't do anything. It wasn't cheating. Good day. But, um, so we have all that stuff. Obviously, we could make a rhyme if we wanted right there. We have room for that lore still if we find a soul rune. Uh, these gloves are really nice, but because I'm already maxed on fire resist, I'm going with the sanders. If I wasn't, I'd have those gloves on instead. Um, this is a nice belt, but it requires 60 strength, but you can see 29 cold res, 24 hit recovery, 10 to life. I would lose the 100 life though, but it would be kind of nice. I'm at 50 strength, 10 more strength, you know, it would cost a little bit definitely to use it. Um... But yeah, so I was just going to say, you know, you can always get thawing potions whenever you want, buy as many of them as you want. And every one you drink is 50 cold res for 30 seconds. So now I have four minutes of cold resist, and that brings me up into the positives. So that's always something that you can do. But you can always just chill around here. You can obviously see in hell stuff is, you know, a little stronger. I think we're also on players 8 right now. So stuff is really going to be stronger. But obviously if you look at my experience, it's like each one of these guys is half a bar of experience just about. Impossible. Now, I also, of course, Impossible. can put on my lower resist out here um, because you're not really going to be teleporting around a ton. If you want to go ahead and kill more mobs, you totally can. Bloodmore is a pretty safe area, really, to kill a lot of stuff. Um, and there will be some boss groups around. So, can always check that. 
Um, however, you can also just move forward. We are level 61, which means right now if we teleported to Hell Ancients, uh, we'd be totally fine. And we could fight them and kill them. So really at this point, it kind of just depends on how much you want to stop and kill things. You know, that really is the determining piece right now. Do you want to stop and do all this killing or not? Something, something, nine months, baby joke. GC to your new family. Right. By lots the way, of lots of great experience just killing random stuff. Obviously, you can always do this. Dot your eyes. Thank you very much. Try and low resist some stuff. Try and blow up some corpses. All the good stuff. And again, tons of experience to be had from killing these sorts of things. So if you want to take a minute and kill a few of these guys, you can really ramp your EXP up. And there's another boss group of it. So I can kind of try and drag all these boss groups in together, Impossible. Impossible. which is a great way to uh, also kind of speed up a little bit of the damage there. Try and just gather, ooh, a Malrune, hello. Wow. It's juicy. So we can just lower resist a bunch of stuff, and then here I'm really laying down like three lightning traps, two corpse explosion traps a little bit. Um, cheats enabled still. <laughs> that is no cheats. On player's eight, this is this is tough, for sure. This is this is a tough one on player's eight. More damage, adding into Charge Bolt Sentry. But the nice thing is, we're getting still a ton of experience killing this stuff. And like I said, feel free to level up as much or as little as you would like throughout, uh, you know, your kind of playthrough at this point. It's always the nice piece is you do get a lot of personal preference. Mr. Llama A W W Mr. Llama Love. Thank you, Zelfis. And all it takes is a little bit of time. do so. I'll definitely drop down the player count after this. After we kill just kind of like this uh, pack here. As this is a little too much. I would say. A little too much difficulty to kill players 8. But it did net us a Malrune, so can I be really too mad? And a lot of experience. Okay, so we'll go to players one now. And Stony Field has a lot of lightning immunes. I'm not really gonna stop to kill much in Stony Field. But you can see now how easy everything dies on players one <laughs> compared to when we were on players eight. The fire traps are better. Out out here, I would actually agree with you. Yes, fire traps are better. Especially now for like act one. Um But Impossible. overall the lightning traps are going to be better for a lot of the scenarios and areas. And I mean it's it's easy. It is so easy experience here. We do so much damage. I'm not even casting lower resist. Just 
kind of set him down and let him die. Let us get our teleport staff going. Let me check over here really fast. Is this all just gonna dead end? Yeah, okay. Just wanted to see. We'll go back this way. Now, always be careful when you are just gonna teleport over random, like, walls. That can be dangerous. Cudgel's actually really nice. Not for this character, but... If you're playing a druid... Before spirit was really, uh... A thing. Impossible. That was a great unique to find on a little speedrun or something. You thought this was a strictly traps run? I mean, it is. Unless you're saying, like, you're not allowed to use Mind Blast or anything as well. And you can even, honestly, just set down traps if you want while you're running. And at this point, because we are such a high level, they will be able to kill a lot of stuff. Now, something we always talk about, which is... Do not be, uh ashamed or afraid to slow down stop whatever I'm doing you can always pause it on YouTube you can fast forward you can rewind whatever it is to make sure that you are able to keep up um, I know that I run maps faster than a lot of you guys will and so don't worry about that right you, if, if I'm ahead of you if, if, if you need to just catch up or if I've been talking too much and you're like I'm past you already llama then you know Go ahead and skedaddle past. 25 to life grand charm is nice, but I have so much space I'm already taking up from all my stuff. Here is the tower if I wanted to do tower runs. We don't really have a crazy need for them. Um, we could consider doing a couple tower runs if we wanted. Tower, tower runs. But I'd say overall, not really needed. Yeah, and obviously you can always do the additional skill quest, right? You might note that I haven't done a lot of the additional skill quests with this character. Um, Radiments are missing. I didn't do the Den of Evil here, right? A lot of that stuff. And that's because I'm only respecking once, and I'm just trying to get through. We'll go charge Bolt Sentry and Vitality. I'm just trying to get through and show a general, basic, you know, guide or play through the game. You don't have all the flashy stuff, not everything has to be done, um, and you can still be totally fine. But of course, on your playthrough, I would definitely recommend, you know, checking all of that uh, good stuff out. I'm just going to put that down. I'll just grab some rejuice. You can put that away. Impossible. We've got seven fire, 20 life. Maybe I get rid of the 12 light reds for the 25 life. Mm, I kind of like the light reds though. I mean, I could obviously keep all of it, but it does take up more of my inventory space than I was really hoping to. We'll just go forward for now. How's the new patch for Trap Assassin? It's great. New new Trap Assassin is like gonna be so good. 19 light res. I might put that over this. At this point, the mana is starting to become less important for me. Uh, and I'd rather have 13 additional resistances. Especially light res. So that brings us to 28 light res, which is really nice. And we can have this, we can have this. And I'm just gonna store that over there. Can always do this just to make ourselves some more rejuice. And we'll keep going. But yeah, new trap assassin is going to only get stronger as as the game continues and she moves forward. She 
gonna be really, really good. And she was already a great character, but I'd say the biggest issue for the Trap Assassin was, one, fire fell off majorly, so now fire will actually be a thing you can run. And two, she did a little bit fall off in the later game, so I think they made honestly great changes to uh, improve her by allowing her damage to increase with things like griffins and stuff now even further. Yeah, spirit and ancient stuff. Um, and then additionally having uh, the pieces we discussed before of grab that for gold. Um, of having like fire assassin or just um, yeah fire traps now you know improved so that opens up that so really it's uh, there's a lot of benefit and then the next hit delay you know would it would I say it's better than a fire or cold source for a starter I still don't think you're ever gonna be better than a fire or cold source with any character to start out because getting the initial pieces, unless you have somebody who can like get you the initial initial pieces. Otherwise, you still need, you know, whatever. Like the character will be totally fine. Don't get me wrong. The the character will now be totally fine. Um yeah, shockweb could be interesting for for leveling with now as well. But it does you know, bring up question around uh, whatever I was saying. Sorry, d d d you're still just you're still not improving. Sorry, beyond teleport, right? Being able to teleport and magic find your early gear, I think, just ends up being worth too much. Yeah, Crescent Moon is like best in slot for a trap sim. So if you find an um rune, Crescent Moon would be insane damage on this run. Which is a good thing to note for, for people who want to A, spend time farming the um rune, B, someone who gets the um rune from their Nightmare Forge, um, you know, whatever it is, like, Crescent Moon is huge damage now for your lightning. Highly recommended. You found lightning is scuffed without infinity. I mean, low resist wand on the offhand is what we have, and that makes it you know much better to to kind of play around with. Helps a lot. If only I could downgrade that Mauru into an um, I know. Wow. Got ourselves a Basil's Vortex. It's kind of fun. Not really for this character in any capacity, but... Kind of a fun find. It's a rough jail map. Not my favorite. <laughs> but all good happens. Let's just find our exit. Looks like it's probably right there. Alright, and we'll continue to the catacombs. And again, feel free to level as much or as little as you want while you are going through all of this. Feel free to kill more or less. Feel free to farm for gear more. You could be doing Hell and Dario runs if you want, honestly, with the character to try and find yourself Shaco and all of this. These are the things that I honestly really love when I'm doing a, a slow play of a game and like having fun playing the game, right? Take a, take a minute or two while you're playing the game and just enjoy, you know, 
Oh, I really am going to farm Andariel for however long. You know, so c come here. Get the waypoint, right? I'm going to farm Andariel for 50 runs. And then I would take like a day or two Impossible. and kill Andariel a few times. And it'd be a blast. And then I'd find, you know, maybe I'd find some... Uh, so, you know, something awesome. I'd find that Umrun, or I'd find a Shaco, or I'd find whatever, and it's just like such a such a cool feeling. You get to upgrade a character in like some unique way. And when you're playing on these solo self-found runs, all of those items yes. become so much more valuable, right? You no longer have to only get a Rakdin Mesh, or have to only get, you know, your Haas, or only get your Enigma, right? You don't have to anymore. Like, now when you're finding just anything, you're like, oh, this is great. So it, it really, that to me is just like what I fell in love with when I was playing D2. And one of these days I'll have to do a, a guided playthrough where I like also take a lot of time to farm the character up. Which is kind of like my grail, you know, because I start out and the characters have nothing and then I farm them up, but... But that was, that was what I, like, really fell in love with and made me want to get back into streaming D2. Now, it's going to be a little rough down here because there are these lightning immune afflicteds. So some of the best things you can do is just convert everything. Of course, you can also get your lower res wand out to help. But converting stuff is uh, going to be really helpful. Just to kind of keep it preoccupied. You can always set safety TP. And we'll just kind of keep the conversions going here. If you have a lot of fallen, corpse explosion can be massive damage as well. But great way to just keep her occupied so you can take her out pretty easily. And boom. How simple is that? Death becomes Give yourselves the clap. Act one, hell is done. And like I said, if you want, go back and farm her, right? Go farm her multiple times uh, in a row because she can drop good gear. And my biggest tip before you go and farm her is buy yourself some of these things. But do it in, in Nightmare because it's not as high of strength, unless you have 60 strength. Literally just go to the vendors in Nightmare, buy yourself gloves with 24, 25 MF, buy yourself boots with 20 MF, 30, whatever. Get yourself a four open socket or three open socket armor and helmet and just shove a bunch of topaz in it. Better than chipped ones though, of course. You know, just like, Put everything you can into these things so you have all this magic find and then just go on a killing spree. And uh, it'll be it'll be really fun. You'll be able to find a lot of cool stuff. And again, when you're doing this single character playing through the game, it just feels so great. You can still extract the files to, to improve the speeds. Act two, we're gonna put our teleport back on. And we'll go ahead and kill a couple baddies. Don't really wanna mess with beetles. So, if they're around, we're just gonna kinda of run forward. Okay, it's not gonna spread out. Favors, thank you, and Zelfus, thank you for that sub from before and reminding everybody they might have a Twitch Prime sub that they can use, or if they don't use it, then they're obviously just deciding to use it on Daddy Bezos. So, you know. You can buy Daddy Bezos a seventh yacht, or you can buy my baby girl a couple more diapers. Your choice. Dun, 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 dun. Or you can use it on another streamer. That also works. 
Again, definitely a lot of light immunes and stuff down here. You can start to like ball stuff up though. And then when you convert things, you can just use your corpse explosion and that can be enough to kill all of the lightning immune. So that is one of the beauties of corpse explosion just in general, right? Is, hey, there's lightning immune, I can't kill it. Put down corpse explosion from death sentry and it kills it. And that's just super helpful. Doing it dirty, Davids and Flutch, all with the Prime subs, saying, not today, Daddy B. Not today. Every sub is another day of diapers for the baby girl. So, like I say, what I like to do is kind of see if I can get a conversion. They'll, they'll kind of ball up on that conversion. Make sure you have some non-light immunes in there. And then once you have that, drop two to three death sentries and everything will be cleaned up. It's really simple and just a great way to kind of get decent experience balling oh. everything up. Charge Bolt Sentry. I, Zelfus, with five gifted subs. Wow. Okay. Seems like a decent ball. And I could totally increase my player count here if I wanted. More diapies. Mwah. Thank you. She actually just upgraded out of her newborn diapers. Jmod? Yep. So she's a big girl now. Those worms are kind of annoying to kill sometimes. Also, raptors can be really annoying. Be careful of some of the small monsters in the game. Sometimes they're just, like, awful. Okay. And we'll just try and find... We found Huggies are working best for us. Pampers were okay. Amazon brand was terrible. You thought you're, I was talking about llama diapies? I mean, I was also talking about llama diapies, but. The little guys in Act 3 dolls? Oh, yeah, they're, they're nasty. Cold is not just the hardest res to break. A lot of times it's just unbreakable. Now something to note, immune to magic is not actually like mad like magic like you might think about it. Like lightning and fire and stuff are not magic. It is actually magic damage, which would be something like a hammer. Um Yeah can be confusing. But elemental, the, we I have a whole video on my YouTube about magic damage and it's honestly such a mess in this game because they use magic in so many different ways. Like if a monster is magic resistant, they don't actually have any like improvement against something like hammers. That actually does improve versus the resistances gives them additional resistance Impossible. be careful down here it can get kind of nasty with the snakes now the nice thing is they're not going to be light immune so you can pretty easily kill them pop them they're also pretty weak generally so like this is magic resistant and he does have increased light resist then you have magic uh, absorb, which is different. You have just like a variety of places where they use the word magic and in every instance, it's different. Sometimes it includes poison. Sometimes it doesn't include poison. It's so, so messy. I'm on player's count one. I mean, I'm level 64. We could definitely go up to a higher player count. This We could be on, like, players 2, 3 if we wanted. 
You saw I was on players 8 earlier. It was working out okay. It was definitely a little bit harder uh, than it needed to be. So I would definitely say don't be on like players 8 a lot of the time here. But, you know, you still can for, for many areas, monsters, whatever. Um, but yeah, like in here, I you know, I could be player 3. And again, the big thing is, one, there's you're not running into light immunes down here. Um, and two, you just... You have such good crowd control with this character, which is really just such a big, uh, you know, piece to help out, right? Oh no, I'm getting close in on. There we go. Convert everything, and I'm fine. So it's like this character, this is why I always, almost always recommend this as like one of the first characters that people should play. Because... If you play this character, you will have everything you need. You have the damage output where you can, you know, do that. You have the survivability. You have this crowd control in a variety of ways. It's budget friendly. You're not needing to get all this crazy gear. It's good in the early game. It's good in the late game. Trapson is the probably the most well-rounded overall character. And now that you know, her, her end game got improved and fire traps got improved with the next hit delay. She might be just like one of the best characters. Plus, of course, you can then always shift into a mosaic assassin later on if you really want to go nutty. She's a little bit micro dependent, but I mean, I feel like a lot of characters are kind of micro dependent. I mean, I guess not. If you're playing like a big old barbarian. It's just going to be really slow. I, I mean, you have to micro a lot, honestly, in the early game with him. She'll be... You'll be seeing more and more assassins as uh, time goes on, for sure. Like, I don't think she's crazy micro-dependent, but I also micro a lot and have decent micro. So, I think, you know, that makes it a little bit different, right? Impossible. Obviously, a summon necro is like much less, you know. I expected worse. How may I help you? Three to lightning sentry. It's kind of fun. If I had two of these puppies, ooh! That'd be so much great damage. So, pretty nice little find. It's always fun to find cool things like that. Yeah, and the one to mind blast on it's also nice. And another point in charge bolt sentry. And we need to do maggot lair. Let's go find it. Any character can find sunders, yes. Curse, stay away from me. How's the kid? Good. Oh, it was so funny, you guys, yesterday. So, I go with Moo Girl to the dog park. And we're chilling there. And then these two girls come up to us to talk? I don't know. I was... It was weird. They like showed up at the dog park and they had a cute little Bernadoodle um, and whatnot. But they they like came up to us and just started chatting with us about the dog park and all of this. And we were just like, we're introverts. So we don't <laughs> we don't we don't do that. <laughs> Who just goes and talks to people randomly? But they did anyways. So. Yeah, so they came up and started talking to us and whatever stuff. So they're they're just chatting about all the things, blah blah blah. And Moot Girl's holding the baby, and our dog is you know out running around. Ours is out running around wherever, playing it, playing with the other dogs. And uh, the one girl goes, "Aw, is that your baby?" And she like looks to she looks at Moo Girl, and Moo Girl goes, "No, uh, our baby's out there." 
And I'm like, what? Yeah. Yes, that is our child she's holding. She's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, for three years, that was my baby out there. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what do you mean, no? Yes, that is our baby. She's drunk, ignore her. <laughs> no, she wasn't trolling. She just, you know, for three years. Her baby, you know, her dog was her baby. So when someone said, oh, is that your baby? She was like, no, she's out running around. But the girl was kind of like, um... <laughs> I don't know how to respond if I ask if that's your baby that you're holding and you say, no. <laughs> Dumb question? I mean, Mugro got it wrong, so... I don't know! She's a stranger who came up to talk. What else do you say, you know? It is a dumb question, but... Somehow, the dumb question was responded to with an even dumber answer. This is hot in here. So when it gets super hot in an area like that, you can switch over and just drop your lower resist. Just try and uh, help out. And then once you get a couple corpses, you'll be able to really get some corpse explosion going and that'll improve a lot of the stuff. Speed up the death process in there. Fast rate recovery is not as important as it used to be. Used to be much more. But still, still good to have, yes. When you get hit, I mean, the, the time, you know, in between. FCR is extremely important, yes. We already got a Maorun today. Maybe we'll get something really nice. Arcane Sanctuary. Okay. <laughs> got two yourself. Cute. All right, not the first way. And again, you can always spend as much or as little time as you would like going through these areas. So if you don't feel comfortable making the big kind of leaps, just teleporting around, then, you know, just take your time and kill your way through it. Because even if you run into a lightning immune, you can group it with non-lightning immunes and use death sentry. You can corpse explode it. And you can always convert whenever things are getting too spicy. And remember, you can always use slash players 8 or 7 right before you pop the chest. And that will make the chest drop more stuff. Now we can go back to players 1. Your daughter was born three weeks ago. Your mom came over and is like, when are you going to try for her brother? <laughs> You're like, can my body heal? <laughs> or wife's body, whichever. Clock's ticking. Impossible. Need all my grandchildren. Alright, third way. At least it's not a fourth. Or is 
on, your decoy is dead. All right, square path. I can't. Groups are just so good. If you can group up for this character. Because Corpse Explosion is just your bread and butter destroyer, right? Corpse Explosion is one of the best skills, if not the best skill in the game. Obviously, there's teleport and static and things like that, but even still, Corpse Explosion is so insanely good. So, really, being able to get groups of mobs to just come over and stand around in big groups and get destroyed... So beneficial. Eleven kids. That might be a bit high. I'm not sure we could do eleven. First off, how do you afford 11 kids? Can't even imagine. Secondly, how do you handle and manage 11 kids? So here we go again, we can get a nice group going over here. And just to make sure you have a mix of death sentries and light sentries. You'll note that I'm kind of alternating almost putting them down. You definitely want to start out with more light sentries and then shift into some death sentries. But you just want to make sure you're continuing to do enough damage and then also be able to kill the corpses whilst doing the damage. I guess the, yeah, the first four are working by the time the 11th is born probably and then at that point you just make them pay for it. You do that whole, I brought you into this world so you owe me money thing that, you know, a lot of the old people like to do. Oh, look at that. A four open socket Colossus Vulge. Obviously still 210 strength and we wouldn't have a mercenary that would have 210 strength in a long time But hey, that could have been like an insight or something, you know Welcome to my shop. Now because we discussed before Our cold res is not great and Duriel does do a lot of cold We can always drink a bunch of thawing potions get our cold res up a little bit Put our lower resist one on make sure we're on players one and take on Duriel. Low resist him. And then we can do like I had chatted with before, where you just want to dodge in and out, get him to kind of freeze up on you a little bit. But he's not going to do a ton of damage. You have a lot of vitality on this character, so you have a ton of life. There you go, I got. And just whenever you have a chance, you can always lay down another trap. And that's it. Act two is completed. Congratulations. Give yourselves the clap, everyone. Act two is done. Charge bolt sentry, more vitality. I shall track the prime evils to the Move on through. If you want to get a couple stamina pots, you totally can. There's eight cold res. I will keep that. Three light res, five hit recovery, and eight cold res. Hello. And I'll fill up on my potions. I'll repair my gear just for my teleport. I actually want to repair the teleport staff. How may I help you? Put that back on. And let's go. Good day. It is easy. Diablo 2 is a very easy game. I mean, it's extremely hard, but it's also very easy.
you know. Now, Act 3 is not fun. Because here you will run into a lot of lightning immunes. This is probably your worst area for killing stuff. Um, and either I'm going to recommend skipping a lot of things or going slow through, using your lower resist wand, making sure you do like we talked about before. Convert, convert. Pray for a conversion, there you go. Get them all locked in on the conversion. Lower resist them, kill them, etc. Right? Because you can see, it's all lightning immune. This is also where uh, lightning javazons are just like, how do I play this game? This is where a lot of their characters get stuck as well. Because it really is just tough. This is, this is a very hard area. You can also reset the map a couple of times until you get like... You know, Impossible. the um, itchies that'll sap your stamina, not itchies, um, the mosquitoes, until you get the uh, big tree guys, they will also be good. this and again I'm not even doing damage to him but just through the corpse explosion we almost killed him and we can just come over here convert something pop the chest grab the eye it, it, nice and simple right couple corpse explosions Bingo, bango, bongo. You got yourself everything you need. Teleport out. We're good. We also have a very nice map right here, as it is going to go ahead and give us a flare jungle skip, which is lovely. Now, again, here we've run into a lot of lightning immune mobs. This is where I can reset. I could also, of course, just do it again. But you can reset a few times just to see if you can spawn a better set of monsters that you want to run through, right? <laughs> you will find there are also cold immunes and uh, things of that nature in these areas. Impossible. So here you can see, oh hey, perfect, we've got some cold immunes instead. Just make it a little bit easier. Makes sense. So if I want, I can kill. This is a great place for leveling if you don't have a ton of the light immunes there. Um, just a lot of these little flares can be really good experience. They don't have a ton of life. And obviously, like we talked about before, you can pack them up. And when you can get big packs of mobs, that's really helpful, right? That's very good for... Uh, For us. Go ahead and grab the jade figurine. Oh yeah. And then I'll ride. So just kind of bring them together here. Nice and simple. Impossible. Three years and one month of llama love. Sir Man Black, thank you. So I'm again laying down four and one. So four light traps, then one death sentry is my general laydown. Um, but you can always adjust it, right? We'll go ahead and set a TP, go to town. Yeah. Player 7 is just usable in offline there. And let's go ahead and imbue this circlet here. Uh -huh. Darn. Just have fun with it, why not? Ooh, 19 to life, 17 to all resistances. Ah. 
I'd be giving up plus one skills. But that is a nice resistance gain. I think I'll keep the plus one skills for now because I'm not feeling crazy unsafe. We can always just hold this over here um, and then come back to that a little bit later on. Because Circlet could roll the plus skills. So we are just kind of hoping off with that. Yeah, lore would be, you know, nice. I mean, it's 17 all res, which is 68 resistances, which is nice. 10 FCR on this, 16 to strength, 9 to mana. Unfortunately, no res or anything to really replace. So we can just hold it over here if we want for now. Better to use a Diadem or Tiara. I mean, I'm level 66 and just using whatever I find along the way. Again, I don't always recommend using your Imbue Quest right at the start when you get it or just whatever. It's something that if you really want your character to like go later game and use it a lot later on, then yeah, you want to wait till you have a higher level or you want to use a diadem or something for it. But ultimately, I'm just doing this for the playthrough with this character. This character is not really going to get used much beyond that. And I can go get a bunch of imbue quests if I need pretty quickly. Um, so I don't worry about it too much. Again, it is a scary area out here. The best thing I can say is just really be prepared to uh, A, either teleport and get out really fast, or B, mind blast and get yourself a conversion. Because with those two things, it'll make it so much better, so much easier, way less to worry about. The imbue calculation depends on your level. It's all based on character level. But for something like a diadem, you need to be, what, like level 7 or something to roll a diadem to be able to get the best drops? Diadems, circlets, and tiaras have a magic level associated with them that no other items have, which allows them to be able to... It, it increases like what roles they can get when they're when you are a lower level there essentially. When you do see something like uh, Midora here and stuff, you do always want to be a little careful. Either try and find the source or just proceed a little more cautiously. Diadem is good because it's got the highest level of that. So if your character, like I said, I believe is level seven, then you will be able to roll a diadem at, as if your character were level like 99, essentially. Like it doesn't, you'll get all the same rolls. There's no, nothing horrible. And you can re-roll a diadem as many times as you would like as well. It'll always be able to get the, the best rolls. Tiara has a lower eye level, or not eye level, uh, whatever the level of it is actually called. Um, so with the Tiara, you'll have to be a little bit more, you know, like be a little higher level. And then a circlet a little bit higher, right, or whatever. Yeah, so Diadem is just the best of that type, the highest. Always be careful with dolls, make sure you keep them a little bit away from you. And here again, create your grouping. So then you can explode things and just make sure you're continuing to convert. So that way you're not running into that scenario where everything is suddenly unconverted and you're just like not expecting it and then they just swarm you and you're dead. Yes, if a converted mob gets hit with curse and you are close enough, you will get cursed as well. It, it acts as if it's a minion of yours. 
in that capacity. See, so I got cursed there because he got cursed. Would you recommend Trap Center Phoenix Assassin? I mean, you're... Like, Phoenix Assassin got even stronger. Trapson got even stronger. Phoenix Assassin is still going to be better overall just because it got so insanely strong with that next hit delay fix. But Trap Assassins are now a thing. Like, they are now actually a thing. I'm going to publish a video right now on my YouTube. Go like this video. Leave a comment for the algorithm. And you're Mr. Llama's be biggest, best fan. And it is showing you that piece. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, we got the brain. We can keep going. Trapson is very relaxing. I don't want to say effortless exactly, but it, it, it feels very nice to play. For me, in my opinion. It's just a nice... Uh, Nice way to move through the game. Like I said, she has she has all the utility. I think that's really the big thing. She has the utility that you want. You know. That a lot of characters, you don't find it. If you're a barbarian, you're like, I'm missing this AoE. And you get a little bit, but, you know, from Mordecai. But you're like, ah, and it takes a while to get there. It's really slow. If you're, you know, a sorceress, you're like, I miss some of the survivability. If you're, it's like all the classes, you know, have something that it, you kind of feel like you're missing. But I feel like this one, you just, you just never feel like you're missing a tool. You have all the tools. Oh, there it was right there. Oops. I like Serena. One, you can always come in and farm Serena if you want. Um, especially with this character. Let me just uh, not get hit. You could always increase the player count if you want and then kill Serena. So we can go up here. We'll do like players eight. Thanks, I guess. And again, get a conversion. Keep it converted. On player's eight, I'm gonna spend a little more time at first putting down lightning traps. Then, I'll, then we can move into death sentries a little bit later on. And I'm gonna go get mana potions. And while I'm doing that, I'll also swap over to my low resist wand. So this is obviously you could come down here on player's one; it'll be much simpler. But. can knock these guys around and get ourselves dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm running spirit right now. Is the video supposed to be called D4? Oh, oops. Diablo 2. Thank you. Happens. That's what happens when you go for player seven, get a little aggressive. Now we can start letting Corpse Explosion do a little bit more work. Obviously, we have a lot of mobs converted there. That I wrote D4. 
need to. Pick up some potions. And beautiful. I'll go back to players one, because players eight is very hard, but we did show that you can do players eight. It might just be a little dangerous at times. Impossible. Okay. And we'll swap back to our teleport staff. Grab the Ort Rune. Ort Runes are always good for recharging. As well as, you know, we could socket that Ort Rune into our helmet or something, of course. If we want to use our socket quest. I'm level 67. Nearing on 68 here. Also, if there's ever a super fast group like this and you just can't get them away from you, you can just go to convert something and then they'll stop and focus on each other, and then you can run away. So, great way again to just have some time. But we'll come through here, grab the Travancore Waypoint for safety. You can always reset your Travancore if there's just like tons of garbage mobs all over the place. And we can bring these guys out. I'm going to go ahead and reset this one. A few too many mobs. I don't really want to fight there. Good day. Just too much cluster at that point, you know? And we can also, of course, take this time. Go to Mashif. We can always repair our teleport. But we can go to Mashif and trade in for the Golden Bird. You don't actually need to talk to Kane. And we come over here, get our potion, get our stats. And that's a lot of extra life for us. For a little effort. Hello. So we'll go try Travancore again. And again, since I'm here and there's not really a lot of areas I'll be needing to teleport on this path to the Travancore. We're just going to kind of pop it. Now, of course, we can always convert. But we want to find a, the non-lightning immune if we can. And there's one up there. There we go. Get a conversion. So, Travancore is hard. And we're really going to focus on trying to keep converting monsters here. So we can lay them down. But if you're able to do this, this is actually the best thing you can do. If you're able to separate off a main mob. And like here we have the ability and we've got this. So it's a little unfortunate there, but that's okay go here and we can just keep torque and get him kind of isolated a little bit just enough so we can whittle him down and kill him now I need to do the sewers as well so we'll go back and do that and we'll go ahead and swap back to teleport so we can teleport over grab our flail And we gone. Trav quest is tough. I mean, that's not like easy. That that takes a little bit of time and and whatnot to get used to it for sure. I can't. What do I have in there? Oh. So that one is, you know, a little bit little bit difficult. So we can go back here to the bazaar. Do the sewers. Obviously we could do the sewers prior to the trav. Impossible. You kind of can do whatever you want for that. 
Order doesn't matter if you have waypoints and you just kind of decide how you want to go through and fight everything. These are also, there's also super chests in here, so we can go to player's eight. Put these ones, but down here, and to the left. We can pop these chests, and over here. And just see, maybe you can get like a nice, nice uh, rune or something. Never know. Um, you definitely want to get to at least a three frame. I would say now on the martial arts assassin. But you can do it pretty easily. Just use the right kind of claw base. So then you just gotta figure out after that. Yep. Impossible. So that that now becomes the more important piece is what claw base you're using. It's not right next to it. Impossible. But it will be probably just down here and to the right. Now again, we talked about Mephisto um, being, or Andario being a great farm spot. I'm a luck. That's all skill, baby. But Mephisto is even better of a farm spot and even easier of a farm spot because you can always cheese them across the bridge. Nice. So, you can always go and get yourself this waypoint if you really want to. So you can cheese them in a variety of areas and ways. But the easiest is just come right here. Don't go too far down or you'll aggro the monsters down there but just go far enough you can see about where I'm at just far enough so Mephisto won't still attack me and I can kill him and like I say this is where you can put on all your big magic find gear and really try and farm up some of those nice items you can get your arachnid mesh you can get whatever here you can get a lot of GG items from Mephisto. Hard to not pull without teleport. I mean, if you don't want to pull without teleport, there's a couple different things you can do. Number one, you can just kill this stuff in here. Right? Fist. Work your way around and Maybe do that. Grab that. Number two, you can always trap him like in this slot, in this slot, in this slot. You just have to like guide him into those areas. It's a little bit harder and a little bit tighter to do so. Does the P7 trick work here as well? What do you mean by the P7 trick? What do you need? So many places to trap. You can trap him on the baskets. He's just really dumb. You can. You would probably not want to kill Mephisto on player seven. Um, players three will more than often be enough to get everything that you're hoping. Five NATO, it was, uh, two Druid, all skills, two, uh, we'll group this, this group up right here. This will be a nice experience. Oh, we got cursed. Still okay. Two to Solar Creeper. Oh, 
I mean, look at how easy that is to just get that experience going. It's crazy. Level up. Charge Bolt Sentry. Vitality. So, whenever you want. Whenever you want to group up these, uh, these mobs like this. Now, obviously we want to be careful for souls out here. We'll go ahead and gather mobs together here. See if we can get like a little bit better grouping of mobs with stuff that'll actually explode. We have a lot of light immunes. I need some stuff to kill first beat that isn't light immune. Okay, we got a little bit in there. And obviously we can also always swap here and do as such. And that'll be good enough. Some explosions. Good to go. Okay, let's see what these are. 24 fire resist. Again, great gloves, but we're already maxed out on fire resist. So we are good to go. Starting traps in for ladder. I don't know. I might. I might go for the fire traps in. It looks... I mean, I've never played, like, much of an in-game fire trap sin, so it seems like it'd be a fun one to do. City of the Danged is quite hard if you spawn tainteds and, and mobs like we got there, so we will want to be a little bit careful here, as they can trap us in pretty quickly. It's nice that we do have this shrine. That'll help for a little bit, and then uh, we'll just have to really be cautious. Or we can get a couple of groups of Venom Lords, which is much nicer for us. Rip Shrine. Those guys don't really feel like dying, it looks like, so I'm just going to keep moving. I don't feel like fighting them super hard for the experience. There's a lot of places we can get experience that's a little bit better, a little bit easier. Yeah, this is patch 2.7. So the normal and nightmare guides are already outdated, exactly. Maybe we just remake part normal? That might be the way to go. I can't. Can also be like a, a group that seems kind of fun to kill. Can't believe I've been watching you so many months in between COVID. Can't. Power build. Can't wait to watch more of this playthrough. Thank you. Do they ever feel like dying? I would assume you want them to die, and they don't have much say in the matter. Yeah. I mean, they they could you know give up a little easier maybe. Kind of be some say. Okay, so we got that. We've got our waypoint. Now I'm gonna go and uh, run back and see if we can get the forge, just cause I feel like doing forge for fun. Impossible. Check to make sure he's not lightning immune. And remember, even though you can't convert him, you can always stun him. So I can always bet lock myself into a corner like this a little bit. I can push back Hephaesto. And I can just keep converting stuff. And I really just want to be careful to make sure that stuff is always converted. Because if I ever have stuff not converted, they'll converge pretty quickly on top of me, and that's not Speed going to be fun. 99 when season starts? No, because we have so much stuff like right after. It's kind of insane. The server slam is on, what, the 12th? 
Plus I have a baby. So I can't really do a speed run for a little bit. With uh, going to 99 like that. I don't know if I'll get 99 next season. We'll have to see. Tears of the Kingdom is also on the 12th. And I'm not certain if I want to play that more or, or the D4 beta more. If you ever don't have this, the Mephisto Soul Stone because you didn't pick it up, you can always just go and talk to Kane, and he will give you a stone. If he doesn't give you one, that means you dropped it somewhere around here. So just go and look and pick it up. Golrun, or Umrun, I mean. Korun, all right, we can make hustle, let's go. Well, I need a shell rune, actually. I mean, Korun is a terrible rune to actually get from, uh, you know, from Hell Forge. But, if we can get ourselves... A Thul rune. Or not Thul. A shell rune. Did I find shale? Oh, wait, I think you're right. I did. Okay. Wait a second. It needs an Eldrune. I threw an Eldrune on the ground earlier. Shoot. Where was that? I'm, I'm still in the game, I think. Wasn't it in Act 3? Act one, did I throw it on the ground? Are you sure? I thought it was act three. Okay, it, it must have poofed, I guess. Oh, I reset Trav. Brutal. Well, that's sad. Alright, let's just keep going. We could do normal Countess runs. It would probably take a few because Eldrin is a little rare to get there. We could also... Uh, I, can't. I can't believe I threw out my only Eldrin. We could also just try and get it wherever. We could also go and do like Taurasha's Tombs, Players 8 and Normal. That'd probably be not a bad place to try and get it. So, if you want to target farm it, you totally can. Hustle would be kind of fun. It would slow down our FCR for teleporting, which would be kind of sad. But, having the other pieces of Hustle would be really fun with all the fast run luck. Obviously, we could do lower Kuros, but also, I don't know if that's the greatest idea. I I need mana. Oh. That'll probably take too long to really get it. Kill first boss. Sometimes you'll get bosses that like are way too, they have just like all of this lightning immunity because they're lightning enchanted and magic immune or something and you can't break the immunity. You can always just go for the strategies I talked about before which is using corpse explosion from the other mobs around it. Um, but even that can be a little bit difficult sometimes. So if it just isn't working out very well. 36 to life, level 69, and we'll be there soon, but that's okay. Then you can always just reset your Chaos Sanctuary.
But we'll go ahead and convert everything. And he's not lightning immune, so we're good. Like I say, biggest piece is making sure we keep stuff converted because this can get very spicy very fast. Very spicy, very fast. We want to make sure that we have stuff converted here. Perfect. And now we can make our escape. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. A little spicy, but all good. This would be hell without Mind Blast. I mean, I'd probably be using like Cloak of Shadows more and stuff, but yes, Mind Blast is very strong. It, I mean, it just, without it, yes, this character would be really difficult. You'd have to find another way to try and help it out. So here we go, here's an example. We got a boss, and he's lightning immune, and we can't break him. So the best thing we can do is try and get some corpses built up Impossible. and then lure him over the corpses. And once he's over the corpses, we spring our trap. Death sentry. And there you go. That's how you clear out a mob that you physically could not kill. If there's no corpses nearby, you go and get another, you know, sometimes you have to drag them a little further. Oh my god, Baguette. Or you call for Emilio. I mean, you can. It'll be hard, but... There are ways you can get creative, but that is definitely the easiest way right there. No, you'll have to wait a little bit. Emilio plus Mind Blast? Yeah, I mean, it can slightly work. Love me some tear haunches. Any chance for you to do a with a controller instead of mouse plus keyboard? I'm playing D2R on my Switch. But indirect targeting or precise trap placement ain't happening. <laughs> I can, uh, we can try one. I'll have to learn myself as I do it. Thank you, Lebor. Thank you, Lord Drake and Cel Silvio and the Penguin. All right, and give yourselves a clap. Act four is done. Points into charge bolt sentry. Keep maxing that. Now, Bloody Foothills is a very dangerous area. There may be times where you end up wanting to reset it because you spawn too many awful mobs in it. You get the Skelly Archers and the Quill Rats and the Javelin Throwers and, what, and it's just like, you can't, you're just getting obliterated everywhere you go. Mm -mm. Now. 
There's no Runewards in Diablo 4 to start. They might add them in later, but they're not going to be anything like they are in D2. Because items can only have sockets up to two sockets and stuff, so... I grew up playing Nintendo. I was a Nintendo boy. Now, something that we've also talked about before in Nightmare, but is true here as well. You can always spend your time farming Mr. Eldritch right here. This is always a great boss to just farm. Nice and easy. Ooh, nice. Make that our, our hustle in that when we get an Eldrin. Nice and easy farm. You can rinse and repeat, reset. You can farm them on higher player counts. Whatever you want. Super simple. Which factor meal are we eating today? Oh yeah. Impossible. We should, uh... There it is. Boom! Factor! Exclamation mark factor if you want to get yourself a delicious set of meals delivered right to your door so you can be a lazy piece of trash like Mr. Llama. I don't like cooking, but I want to have a good meal. And Moo Girl is busy taking care of the baby. You know it's easier? Exclamation mark factor. You can use that link right there, get a little discount. It's all good. <laughs> Passion. <laughs> Why can't we just eat Lunchables for every meal? This is essentially like that. I mean, it, it's better than Lunchables, but it's essentially the idea. You don't like shopping or cleaning up? Truth. Yeah, if there wasn't any cleanup, maybe I'd enjoy cooking more. I can't. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just run to grab this waypoint. I just like grabbling, grabbing the crystalline passage waypoint. I think it's a good checkpoint. Um, it allows you to come back for the frozen river if there's like souls in there or something that you don't want to fight. It just ultimately ends up being a really nice, uh... Okay, we've got these souls. And there you go. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to fight those. I would have normally saved quit prior to dying right there. Like, before even going in as soon as I saw the souls. Because you just, you know it's not worth it. <laughs> It's just so brutal. I can't. Okay, so we'll go to the frozen river. Hopefully no souls this time. Nope. See if we can risk it for the biscuit. Dangerous. Truly horrible. Oh my god. <laughs> I was hoping that they didn't continue all the way through, but they did. Can try one more time here. Now, of course, you don't have to go and do this if you don't want to. Um, it is 10 all res, though. Highly recommended. But again, when there's all of these souls, Impossible. it just becomes 
near impossible. So you have to keep rolling it until you don't have souls, or unless you have a character that has just like crazy high uh, resistances. Or like in the second run I did right there where I got all the way to the end, but then you just have to not have souls right at the end. So you have to get a little bit lucky that they aren't, you know, spawned at that point. Though getting souls three times in a row is a little bit unlucky, so, you know. Four times in a row, excuse me. It can spawn without souls, this I do promise. How many bits for P8 Frozen River with souls? Hmm. Do I, do I have to, like, get it? Go through it completely? Skip because you don't need it? I don't, you know. But it's just... This character, it's so easy to get if you just don't get souls. Fuck. Uh, 3,300. We'll go through. P8 and and uh, get it with souls. All right, five times in a row. We're just gonna say forget about it for now. Impossible. And we get extra fast death lords to welcome us, followed by fanaticism. Just not very nice in there, is it? That's why I always like to get that waypoint. Impossible. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate map. No, 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 no. Got the old wrap around. These are definitely very scary areas. Passages are just a little narrow. A little narrow, th narrower than you like. Plus, you just have such nasty mobs in them. New job sucks. Cannot watch stream during my shift like I used to. Man, that's awful. You should get a new job. See you in heck. Thank you very much. Ancient's Way is another one of those areas where getting the waypoint isn't a horrible idea. I have the the area plateau or whatever the area is called right before it, so I feel a little safe because I do have a waypoint nearby. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. Teleport was failing. I really hate the teleport bug. And uh, those guys are pretty awful as well. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop being so uh, risky. I'll play a little more serious. Sorry, Frozen Tundra. I'm playing like really risky right now, trying to make the hero jumps and stuff, but yeah. And what I mean by telebug is when you're using charges on a teleport staff, sometimes it will just fail. It just will not teleport you. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just will not actually do it. And uh, you will die because of it many times. So because of that, sometimes the best answer is going a little slower. We are drawing pretty bad mobs right now. Getting the quill rats and the lancers. That's a really like nasty combination. So that's a little unfortunate. Mm, this will be a dead end. Impossible. Yeah, it's it's a very awful bug they need to fix. But we'll go up here and we can do ancients. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing the ancients here. The first one is the real way. The second one is the not as real cheap way. Blinks, thank you for the sub. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I need to make space. Uh, venom grips, whatever. We'll put our mage plate away. And we can do this. So, what you want is, first things first, you do not want to have um, lightning enchanted on any of the monsters. Okay? So, any of the three, you do not want to have lightning enchanted. If you have magic resist and spectral hit, or and or spectral hit, it's not going to be as fun. Um, and especially on Maddox, you, you don't want to have that. You need to be able to cast lower resist on Maddox. So if he is lightning enchanted, spectral hit, or magic resistant, we will get rid of it. We don't want it. All right? Anything else we can play with. It can, of course, get a little scary, though, if you have, like, extra fast Talic, or, you you know, and or fanaticism, or things like that. So, essentially, what you want to be doing is just re-rolling using your Tome of Town portal uh, to get mobs, or to get these three heroes to not have as scary of stuff. Let them have Cold Enchanted or Fire Enchanted. Let them have Teleport. Let maybe Corlick have Extra Fast or something. Um, you know, let them have Stone Skin. Let them have... You're not going to always get it perfect. They can have Curse and things. But you just want to get rid of nasty, nasty stuff. Holy Freeze. But here you can even see he is Lightning Enchanted. We cannot do Maddox with Lightning Enchant. So... I always just like to do a quick check just for the enchants and then kind of look beyond it. So fire enchant spectral hits great, but Maddox is lightning enchanted again. So we will reset Maddox again. Okay, spectral hit Maddox. I don't want to do spectral hit, remember. Cold enchant or enchant. The holy shock's not too bad. Fire enchanted extra strong. And cursed magic resistant. This will work. Always be aware so you don't run out of town portals. Now, you can always just do this initial way of killing the ancients, which is you just run around and do this. And then once Maddox, or once uh, Talik and Korlik are dead, you can just lower resist Maddox and have him just try and hit you through like this. He won't do it. Um, you can set the traps next to him, lower resist him over and over again. It'll take 5-10 minutes, but you'll be able to do it, right? So that is one way there. Additionally, you can respec and max out Fire Blast instead of, like, Charge Bolt Sentry. So you can have Lightning Sentry, Shock Web, and then the rest of the points in Fire Blast or whatever it is. You'll do a lot more fire damage and be able to kind of take them down a little bit faster. So that is an option. Um... Or the easiest way to do it, and you'll still have to take some time to do so, is to come over here, and whenever Korlik leaps on you, you set a town portal. Don't worry, Mr. Lama, this is a great guy. And I'll, I'll create a video for this whole piece right here. But you'll set a town portal. And what this does... What this does is it actually creates an invisible barrier that nobody can run through. You can see my character glitching out. Every time Korlik leaps, when you set a portal, it creates a barrier that will not stop. So while you can still run through here, you have to do it again. Until you, you don't need to anymore, at that point, you can come over here, you can get guys that you would like. You can just drag everybody. Like I say, extra fast Talic is not fun. To over here and then you just teleport and now they will all stand there nice and simply for you you can lower resist them and they die Slow resist him again. <laughs> and 
like I said, Maddock will take a while. We can actually throw shockwebs at him as well. I wonder how much damage this does. I only not know. Try some low fire blasts. This will work for any class. Now, the biggest thing you need to be scared of is one, running out of mana potions on this fight. <laughs> but two, you don't want to get too close. If you get too close, then Talik or it will teleport through, or not teleport, he'll whirlwind through onto you. He can whirlwind through that and Corlet can leap over it. So you want to be kind of behind this pillar when you're doing this. Uh, I think trap, fire trap assassin moves up, and fire druid might move up a tiny bit as well. And this is why going into the strategy of, you know, having more, uh, in Fire Blast isn't a horrible idea. Bender is who I heard. I mean, we all knew this bug existed, but none of us thought about taking it to this uh, point. Where it was like, oh yeah, what if we could actually block them? Because whenever you're resetting the Ancients, you would just naturally run into the little blocks, and it would be really annoying. But I never thought about, you know, before, do they actually get blocked by it as well? You know. And can I just stack all the blocks up and then keep them in a bad spot? Which, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed that I didn't think of that, because that feels like... Oops. Should have been obvious. Changing graphics won't change anything right now. <laughs> now, like I said, for Maddock, you don't even need to cheat, quote-unquote, in this capacity. Let me, uh, let me bring all this over. You can literally, you know, all right, come here, Maddock. He's just very dumb. So you can just stand right here, and he will just forever throw into nothingness. Cast lower resist beside him. Put your traps up. I mean... It's pretty simple. He's he's not the smartest.
This is why, though, uh, respecking into... Or I personally like to respec and have a big fire blast. Instead of, like... Or just not even respecking, but just putting the points into fire blast instead of the rest into charge sentry. You can put them there. You could have, you know, 16, 17 points there, 18 points there. Your fire bombs do 400, 500, 600 damage. Um, and that's enough to kill Maddox a lot faster. So it does make it a, a faster way. But if you just want to be pure light like this, it still works. It still will work. Just make sure you have enough lower resist charges before you go into it. You can see I've used about 20 or so. And just like that, Ancients are down. Level 69. Moving and grooving. If we get Pike Women down here, that's going to be my least favorite. We didn't get an amazing group there. I'm going to put my Tele Staff back on. So, Marauders are not super fun. Neither are Harpies, because we'll get cursed. Careful of the Might Aura. And make sure we reset this to throw, so that we don't accidentally get ourselves killed from clicking on somebody. This is hell. No souls in level 2 is our prayer. If there are, we'll have to take it a little slower. Either way, getting the waypoint's usually not a bad idea here. We do have souls, that's unfortunate. And we're also pretty heavily poisoned right now. So we will refresh that. Okay. So important to always leave a TP up because of the souls. Fresh meat. Dube, thank you. And we have a waypoint. Now at this point, because they're souls, we can totally just reset. Just say forget about it. Or we can charge through. Either one is totally fine. With that T2 sub, thank you so much. Welcome back, 28 months. Impossible. But like I said, you will want that waypoint because sometimes you'll just run into areas that are just horrible. And here, this looks fun. I'm gonna put Corpse Explosion up and let it just go to town over here. Yum, 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 yum. Didn't resist. Okay. We do have souls in our throne and death lords. Not a great combination. Let's see how many of each. Not ideal. But not a lot of souls in here. We'll go ahead and swap over to lower resistance wand. Now we can't convert champions, so that is difficult. Just try and knock him back enough so we can lay down our stuff. They're quite hard. This would totally be one that you could reset if you wanted. And we have that soul still, so what do we do with souls? Well, we've talked about it before. I mean, we can totally just uh, kill it with low resist. 
But we could also drag it over a corpse if we wanted. So then we get the corpse explosion. See if we can get him to come here. There we go. That'll kill him. You tell them silly jokes. That also works. Simple as that. Use your code POGLAMA APR50 for 50% 50 off your first factor box. That's unfortunate. Colenzo rolled magic resistant lightning immune. Literally the worst combination we could have. Cannot break his immunity. So, honestly, that might be a reset. We can see if we can drag him out or we can drag some mobs in to bring on top of him. Probably going to be our best bet if we don't want to reset it. Mercenary is a thing if we were building a mercenary and all that, but since we're not really. He's also fire immune, so the corpse explosions only do half the damage. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Around the rows. Oh, God. Perfect. Yeah, that was just a really unlucky uh, roll right there. But that's how it works. Sometimes you gotta. You gotta deal with things in creative ways. Which is something that I really like about the game, you know? Especially when you're playing through it. Sometimes you need to be a little creative. Wake of Fire is still fantastic, but there are going to be a lot of fire immunes you'll run into, so that is still going to be a problem. Now, if you can get, keep these guys pretty clustered up, the corpse explosion should be able to take out Bartuk. Especially if you get lower resist on him. And then it's not too bad. If they get too spread out, it'll be a lot harder. It'll take a little bit longer to kill. Charge sentry and stats. Again, another group that's pretty good to be able to get converted and keep together. And just drop your lower resist. And once we get a few corpses, the rest all follow suit. Now you won't be able to convert this last group. So with Lister, you really just need to keep kind of shoving them around. And kind of keep them clustered as well, eventually there. That hurts.
If they are extra fast, sometimes the best strategy can be just literally taking them outside of the throne room so you don't have to deal with them. The cold enchant is painful. But you can always do this. You can just drag them away if you don't wish to fight them. And then just run back into the throne room. And Bale will laugh. Now, obviously they weren't too weak. We definitely could have killed them. We got ourselves a friendly soul that came along. So we'll just uh, slow kill him. And then we can move on to Senor Bale. And if we want, we can always throw shock webs as well at Bale. Try not to get hit by his cold blast. Can be a little bit annoying if you do. And if you ever want to get rid of his clone, because let's just say that his clone is being really annoying or something, you can always just go to town for eight seconds away from Bale. So go out of vision there. Go to town. You can buy your potions, do whatever stuff. You can get some thawing potions just to increase your cold resist. Once eight seconds is over, come back in and Bale and all of the uh, tentacles as well will have despawned. Everything that's away from your portal. If you do it when you're too close to the portal, then it'll still technically keep like vision on him and it won't be as good. And it won't despawn, so. Now, which one is the real Bale? Only the real Bale can teleport. That is the first thing to note. The second thing to note is, look at the demon in the name. Watch as I swap between of them. Look at how the demon actually shifts on the name. So if the demon is further to the left, it's the fake Bale. It's easier to see in uh, LOD, honestly. Because Demon lines right up with Bale on, on the fake one, and on the real one, Demon is more centered. Did they leave that on purpose? I think so. But who knows? Be funny if they, they didn't. Weird the final boss is so easy. I mean, I've died to Bale before on speedrunning. But yes, boss fights in Diablo 2 are generally not where all of the difficulty comes in. And there you go. In no time at all, you are now the proud owner of a matriarch assassin. GG! Big claps to you. Well done. You have now beaten hell on your own. Nice solo self found grind. And now you can go back and uh, do whatever you want. Go grind for all the other stuff. Get yourself some more nice things. Get better gear, right? Get that Eldrune, make that hustle. Here is our ending gear. It's, I think, pretty much exactly what we started with. 
barring the ring I changed out to 19 light res. Otherwise, pretty much the same. A little bit more on uh, a couple more charms that we picked up. Here's our final skills. There you go, man. Trap Assassin is fantastic. A great playthrough. We're level 70. If you want to keep leveling up like crazy, go like player 7. Come out here and just go to farm these guys. Great place to just pick up some really good levels. And you can just rinse and repeat it, you know? That's the beauty. So you can do this, you can do pendle. Running over and over, once you save there. You could go and do more bail running if you want. You can farm terror zones. Forgotten Tower is actually a fantastic terror zone for this character. You really have a lot of options. So, GG! I hope that this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, guided playthrough for the Hell Assassin. And I'm going to be trying to be getting more of these guided playthroughs out for Resurrected. Again, I know that it kind of shifted, so maybe we need to do part normal and nightmare again, though it'd be kind of confusing jumping to a new character. It's still the same thing. You can just run your fire traps a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I hope this is helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, YouTube. Mwah. Peace, congratulations, and I'll see you guys in the next one.